Hello, advanced English learners. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have a live conversation with Greg, and we're very excited to talk to you about a very interesting topic that pertains very much to living in the U.S. Mm. So, we're going to get started. All right, Greg, so do you want to know today's topic? I would love to know today's topic. It's about <laughs> living in the suburbs and living in the city, generally speaking, in the U.S. And we're going to talk specifically about the benefits of both. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, there's definitely a significant difference between the suburbs and city. Yeah. And perhaps before we talk about those differences, maybe we first define what a suburb is. Yes. Right? I think most of us know what a city is. Um, but what is a suburb? It's a good question. Well, I'll give my definition and then you can give yours. So essentially a suburb is, it's an area that is outside of a major city or a city. And it's the idea of basically being in nature and there are, you know, highways around you and you have to drive places to get to this place. Yeah, I would suburbs. Th- yeah, I would think of a suburb as basically the extension of a city, right? Mm-hmm. The less developed extension of a city. So generally speaking, cities get so crowded that there's overflow right? People uh, don't want to be cramped up in the city, but they still want to be close to the city. So that's how the suburbs sort of came about, right? They're this sprawl, urban sprawl, they call it, um, that that starts to develop around the cities. They're not big enough to be their own city, right. but they are their own distinct communities. Yeah. Um, and they're intended to be close enough to the city uh, that you can get in, um, you know, within a reasonable commute for your work and then get back out and see your family at the end of the workday. And you highlighted a key component of it, commute, right? So essentially, you are going to commute to your workplace if you're not working from home, let's say, if you're going into the office. So that would entail driving someplace, generally speaking, when you're in the suburbs, or maybe taking public transportation. But more often, it would be someone getting in their car and driving to the workplace. Yeah, and in fact, um, a lot of suburbs, the more vibrant ones, do have, like you're saying, actual built-in infrastructure to get people from the suburbs into the city. So you have what are called commuter rails, yeah. right, and um, light rail systems where people can just jump right on the the train and get in and not have to, you know, drive into a city, which can sometimes be difficult with traffic. That's right. And so now we can talk a little bit more uh, with granularity about the type of suburb. So there can be dense suburb, there can be urban suburb, there can be sparse suburbs. Yeah. So do you want to touch upon? Yeah, sure. So um, there are a, a wide variety of suburbs. Yeah. And there aren't necessarily strict guidelines as to what is considered what. Right. But you know, when you're in one of these, you can sort of get a sense of what the deal is, right? And so. You mentioned a dense urban feel, right? Mm -hmm. So a dense suburb would be something where um, you might have a bunch of townhouses. There's not much greenery, um, sidewalks, right? It feels almost like a low-key part of the city itself. Yeah. So that feels quite urban. Um, And, you know, some might even classify it as a borough of the city as opposed to the suburbs. Right. But it's generally far enough outside the city to be considered a, uh, a suburb. Uh, So that's the more dense version. On the other hand, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, Mm -hmm. you can have a very sparsely populated suburb. Yeah. Um, And uh, a sparse or thinly populated suburb tends to have much more space. Yeah. Um, So more land around the houses. The houses are further apart from each other, not right next to each other. Right. More greenery, right? So um, there's enough space because there's space between uh, the houses. You can have trees, and even the the roads might have trees. You're probably also going to see fewer sidewalks, just yeah. because there's not as much infrastructure for getting around. Right in a in a um, a sparse suburb, you're probably more likely to um, need a car to get around. Yeah. Um, so, th- and then you know you have everything in between that, um, 
and that just varies depending on, generally speaking, the further away from a, a city you get, the more sparse the suburb becomes. Yeah, and so the town might be maybe not uh, not as big. For example, there might not be much to that town specifically. You might have to go to the next town over for there to be maybe restaurants or schools even. So it really can vary, like you said, Greg. Um, so that's the suburbs in the U.S., of course. We're talking about the U.S. cultural context. And now let's shift gears and talk a little bit about the city. So what's the definition of a city? <laughs> well, I think we all know what a city is. But um, to be specific here, uh, we're talking about a place with um, a dense urban environment. Yes. Right? Typically, it's going to have some kind of built-in public transportation system. Right. Uh, the population's probably going to exceed 100,000 people, yeah. right? At that point, you're starting to get really into what, what I would consider a city, and at least for the purposes of this discussion, we'll yeah. call a city. So uh, just, you know, a densely populated um, uh, sort of concentration of people and buildings and offices and so forth. Exactly. So let's now talk a little bit about the benefits of being in the suburbs. Yes. So, yeah, the question is, why would anyone want to go to the suburbs, right? right? If you have a city and the city has everything you need right. and everything's so convenient, why would you go to the suburbs? Right. Well, you know, one of the biggest advantages that I feel yes. um, the suburbs have is um, the peace and quiet, right? <laughs> yes. So for me, uh, I, I love cities, but at the same time, they can get um, very intense. Um, and sometimes you can even feel claustrophobic, right? You feel sort of um, stuck inside a, a box, yeah. right? Um, whereas the suburbs mm -hmm. give you uh, room to spread out um, and you can hear the birds chirping. And again, there, is t there does tend to be more greenery. Yeah. Um, so that peacefulness of the suburbs is really appealing to me. Right. And like you said, there's a lot of space, a lot more space than you would get. We have a great expression in English, uh, bang for buck. So you get a, a good bang for buck, generally speaking, in the suburbs for space. So typically speaking, so I'm thinking of, let's say, New York City, because that's a city we're both very familiar with in the U.S. And in New York, you know, typically... New York City, to be specific. New York City. As opposed to the state. True, exactly. Thank yes. you for that clarification. You know, you might not get that much space, and you'll be paying quite a bit. For that same amount of money, you can get maybe something at least double, maybe even triple or quadruple. Triple. Yeah, easily triple, depending the, on where you are. Yeah, the amount for that same amount of rent that you would, you know, use for that you would spend on renting, you can get something much bigger in the suburbs. And so who does that make sense for? Well, young professionals who are thinking about starting a family or, you know, people who already have a family and their kids are going to schools. Because um, you do have the potential to have a lot of space. So if you need a lot of rooms, or it can even be for, you know, couples who are optimizing and they want a lot of space in their house. Maybe they have home offices, a home gym, especially now with every with a lot more people working at from home that can be something that appeals to people who would like more space and don't necessarily need to be in a city per se. Yeah, that's actually uh, something that we've seen a lot of uh, in the last two years. Demand for suburban real yeah. estate has skyrocketed, right? It's gone way up uh, because suddenly everyone does want their own work from home office. Okay. Um, and if there's two people, they both want offices, right? Yeah. And to fit a gym in too, suddenly you're talking about a three bedroom house plus a basement. Yeah. Uh, you need a lot of space. And most of us can't afford that in a city, but right. in the suburbs, maybe you can. Right, so there's that potential with the space depending on your needs with space. Um, one thing that I love about the city is that it's so easy to go for walks without even thinking. So if you're someone who's conscious about step counts and tracks their steps, a lot of people like to target that 10K steps per day, or maybe you have a different goal in mind. Whatever the case, with walking in a city, 
when you're walking to the subway or walking to the bus station or walking to wherever, a cafe, you're not even thinking about the steps. You're just doing it. And then at the end of the day, it's a nice surprise. Oh, wow, that many steps today, really? It's so true. Uh, when I'm in the suburbs, I have to very sort of consciously focus on getting those steps in the day. Often what I do is I yeah. jog in place at my desk just to build up the step count. Whereas in the city, yeah, you can easily accidentally blow past your 10K, uh, 100%. your 10K threshold very, very quickly. So that is nice, that, that ability to spread out. The other thing I love about cities is the culture, right? There's, there's a really uh, diverse blend of, of types of people, right? You have um, the, the business types, you have the artistic types, um, you know, the, the medical types. It's, it's just cities have such a nice blend of different types of people. So when you go out, when you meet your friends, uh, more likely you are going to engage with people that are from all different walks of life. Um, so I really like that breadth of um, sort of um, diversity. What do you call it? Yeah, it's diversity. I want to try to use some other word, but mm -hmm. yeah, I like that that breadth of experience that you get in a city because uh, it has so many different types of people. I definitely agree with that. It's a nice place to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet in in a setting because they're just we call them. So if you are maybe not originally from a city, but you move there, let's say post-college or for a job opportunity, they're known as transplants. And so there are a lot of people who are there in the city and they're from all different parts of the US or even around the world. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get to know people other than what you normally, what, like who you normally interact with, Yeah, which is nice. And what's interesting is it's not even necessarily, not it's not, required that you interact with these people. It's just the fact that you walk outside and see people that are different from you. Um, that's much more likely to happen in a city than it is in a suburb. 100%. And on that note, because there are people from all around the world and all around the country, the US, you see a lot of diversity in the cuisine in a city. So you'll find very specific types of restaurants that you might have never even heard of um, with specific dietary patterns or, you know, cuisines and traditions. And that's really refreshing. I always love exploring different types of food and cuisines when we're in a city. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Uh, the food scene uh, can be really strong yeah. in the city. Though I will say I've been also very impressed with um, the, the food scene in the suburbs too. You know, depending yeah. on which suburb you're around, True. Um, you can have a really nice um, concentration of high quality ethnic food, as we call it, the, sort of the food that's not considered core American food. Yes, that's very true. And of course, depending on how big the suburb is, you can also probably guess that the bigger it is, the more diverse you'll you'll find in terms of diversity, you'll find in terms of food and cafes and whatever you're really looking for. In terms of museums and art galleries and things like that, what would you say? Yeah, that's another thing is, where yeah. you, you get them in both places. And again, it depends on the size of both. It's true. Right? Typically in a city, the museums uh, and the galleries you're going to see are going to be a bit larger. They're going to have, um, you know, probably more famous paintings in there. And there'll be more of them. And there'll be more of them. And it could be hit or miss, right? There might be so many, but they might not all be great. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so because of that, uh, you do have more selection. Yeah. Uh, they can also be busier, right? Particularly if in a place like New York City, a lot of those museums are world famous. And so everyone from around the world comes to check them out, which yeah. is great. But, you know, if you just want to have a nice casual walk through a museum, it might not be so casual. You might have to be fighting your way just to, you know, see a painting. Right. Whereas in a suburb, you do also have museums and art galleries, but they tend to be much smaller uh, and tend to not be crowded. Yeah. And because of that, you can have a much more intimate experience um, with the art, which uh, I appreciate as well. Definitely. And it just, it depends. Like if you're looking for a more laid back vibe, then, you know, suburbs might be the play. If you're looking for more of the hustle and bustle, then the city might be more of, you know, your vibe. But I think it's nice to experience both, to be honest. 
I do too, yeah. The way I think about it is um, when I, you know, just got out of college and I'm trying to meet as many new people as I can. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to create as many job opportunities as I can. Yeah. A city is a great place to be, Definitely. right? Definitely. Um, and you don't mind living in a tight little apartment, maybe sharing it with some friends. Yeah. Um, because your focus is on sort of building your career and building yeah. your network, making friends. So uh, the sort of the material circumstances don't matter as much. Um, and then as you get older, and like you said, uh, you want to start think, growing a family and you want to sort of spread out a little bit. You already have a network. When those things start to matter less, the suburbs suburbs become a really attractive option. Right. Just because you can still get to the city from the suburbs when yeah. you want that hub, you know, that hubbub, that, yeah. that energy. But at the same time, you have the option to, um, you know, really just sort of expand your, your living situation uh, at a cheaper price, start to save up and um, enjoy all the peace and comforts that come with the suburbs. That's right. So generally speaking, a lot of times right out of college, new grads will flock to cities for the job opportunities, to figure out what they want to do with their life, to gain lots of experience career-wise and professionally speaking and also personally speaking. And the reality is, is when you're living in cities, you don't necessarily spend that much time at home because it's just not as comfortable to, right? So when you're meeting friends, you're gonna do that outside. You're gonna meet in cafes, generally speaking, of course. Um, and this is not just, you know, true of New York City, for example, or like any city in the US, but when I've lived abroad in cities, uh, it's been the same sort of, you know, thing uh, where you meet friends outside. And that is great because then you don't have to worry about just being crammed in a small apartment, for example. But when you are in a suburban setting, people do meet outside. They'll meet, you know, at points of like in the city or a city close to it or some park or garden or something like that or a museum, like a meetup point. But also people tend to go to each other's houses for things like dinner parties or weekends or pool parties or barbecue or things like that where there's more of an excuse to go to people's houses. One, because there's space and two, because it's comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great contrast. Yeah, so I would say that for social life, you can have a healthy social life in both types of contexts. Absolutely, yeah. You, you can have a vibrant social life in either, or if you'd like to be a hermit, you could do that in either as well. So in, in uh, both contexts, you have options. That's right. So would you say that the suburban experience is very much an American invention, Greg? I don't know if it's an American invention, and, and I don't think the suburbs ever came about deliberately. It's more of like mm. a phenomena, <laughs> right? Um, but definitely America does seem to have, in my experience, the most built up suburbs, right? Mm -hmm. Often in Europe, you'll have towns and those tend to be very separate um, from the cities that they that they neighbor. Yeah. Whereas the US tends to have more of that blend and you can't really determine when you've left the city and entered a new city or a new town, right? Um, so yes, I would say the US has probably the most robust and developed suburb infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, but you do start to see similar patterns emerging uh, throughout the world. So I'm excited to see how uh, different com countries you know, start to develop their own suburbs over time. Right, and that's a good point because, I mean, we've traveled quite a bit uh, around the world and we've seen cities, we've seen suburbs. And it's funny because in, in some countries you'll go into what the suburb scene is like, but it would be. It might not be very easy to get to. There might not be the built-up uh, infrastructure that you mentioned. So, do you call that a suburb, or do you call that just being in nature? Like, I'm still sort of grappling with that well, notion. You know, in a lot of places, once you leave the city, it's villages, right? You get yeah. into other villages, right? Um, and I, what I would say is, it, it really comes down to the nature of the job opportunities, right? In, in the US, it's a very service-oriented economy. 
Um, and that can be, uh, you know, you can you can work and earn a good income yeah. without being in a city, right? You, they have these corporate complexes that you can go to in the suburbs um, or people are working from home. Right. So there's more infrastructure for earning a good salary outside a city. That's a good Whereas point. in a lot of sort of more emerging uh, environments, emerging economies, uh, the the best job opportunities are almost exclusively in the city. So um, there's no interest Right or need to be in the suburbs, uh, simply because the you know all the job opportunities, all the opportunities to make money, uh, are located in the city itself. Yeah, and with the gig economy and with remote jobs, there also is sort of be there's a paradigm shift where people don't necessarily have to be tied to a city to find good jobs, well paying jobs, because they can do something online. They can have a, an online community that they interact with. So then some people might say, well, what's the point of being in a city if your job is completely online, your social network is mostly online? What would you say to that? Yeah, I, I mean, people have been calling uh, for the end of cities for, <laughs> for years now because of what you're saying, yeah. you know, the increasing technology that allows us to work remotely from wherever. The mm-hmm. fact is, at the end of the day, we're very social creatures. Yes. And so uh, the uh, we're always going to be interested in congregating in one spot. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always going to be uh, this sort of motivation to be together in a city, right? And cities are actually very efficient in many ways, particularly from a carbon footprint imprint, a carbon imprint, right? Your footprint, uh, your carbon footprint is what right. it's called. Right. Basically, if you think about the amount of impact you have on the environment. It's much more efficient in a city because there's a lot more shared services, right? Not There's not single houses with their own air conditioning yeah. units. Instead, it's one big apartment building that all shares one air conditioning unit and one water boiler. Uh, most people don't have cars, Yeah. right? You so can walk, you can walk everywhere if you exactly. choose. So there are environmental reasons to have cities. There's social reasons to have cities. My guess is that we're always going to see uh, vibrant cities, um, maybe fewer than we had in the past. But they'll so be there maybe might be even, consolidation. Yeah, but they'll be even nicer, maybe. Maybe if, if they're um, fewer. But certainly, certainly, they're not going to go away. Yeah. Nor should they. I mean, I love cities. I also love suburbs. I think it's nice to have a mix, um, and not necessarily, you know, do one one week and one the other. That would logistically not really make sense unless yep. you have multiple homes, but. The idea of spending, you know, part of your life in one place or one type of place, like a city, and then another part of your life more in a suburban area and then going back to a city and so forth. That could be nice because we, you know, depending on what stage of life you're in, either of those can be really great options, cities or suburbs. Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, this was a nice little discussion. If there's anything else that comes to mind with living in the city, living in the suburbs that you want to share with us, feel free to leave a comment. And what about you? What's your preference? Do you prefer to be in a more of a city type setting or more of a suburban scene or setting? So share that with us as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow the podcast, subscribe to the podcast and share it with friends because that really makes a big difference for us and it helps us continue to do what we love to do. All right. Well, I think we've covered most of it, if not all of it. So we're going to see you in the next lesson and next conversation. Bye, everyone.